Peter Block here in New Orleans at the AHA annual meeting. On my left is Milt Packer. Milt does not need any introduction. He's from Baylor University in Texas. And uh, Milt has been interested in heart failure for, what, about a thousand years? A thousand years. Yeah, I think that's probably correct. In any case, there's a new trial now about the acute treatment of congestive heart failure. So Milt, tell me the name of the trial, what you did, and then we'll talk a little bit about outcomes, which are a mixed bag. Uh, the name of the trial is True AHF. And it's a very important trial in acute heart failure because acute heart failure is not a particularly well-studied disease. And in order to introduce the trial, it's important to introduce why we did it. Uh, there are two pathways in acute heart failure. There's what I would call a congestion pathway. There is a redistribution of fluid, retention of fluid, increase in intravascular volume, cardiac distension, and worsening symptoms. There's also an injury pathway. Uh, release of troponins, acceleration of disease, more higher risk of hospitalizations, higher risk of cardiovascular death. It has been hypothesized in acute heart failure that these two pathways are causally related to each other, that the acute distension of the heart causes micro-injury and the release of troponins. And we wanted to test whether that was true. Okay, so by releasing or by decreasing acute dilation of the heart immediately on heart failure admission, you might change that. You might. And that was the essential hypothesis in the true trial. Okay, so what you use as a drug and how'd you give it and what were the results? And so the drug we gave was a drug called Uleritide. It's a natriuretic peptide normally made by the kidney, uh, acts on uh, a, a, in a typical vasodilator natriuretic manner. We knew that it was going to cause decongestion and we wanted to see what it would do in terms of long-term mortality because there's never been a long-term mortality trial in acute heart failure. And sure enough, it did decrease congestion. So what did it do to mortality, more importantly? Well, it really decreased decongestion. It lowered N-terminal pro-BNP, lowered blood pressure, lowered in-hospital worsening events, caused intravascular decongestion, but no effect on troponins, no effect on recurrent hospitalizations, no effect on long-term cardiovascular mortality. Drug was only given for 48 hours. Okay, so a little disappointment, Milt, but uh, clearly there's something going on here, which is a good thing. So what's the take-home message here? I think actually the take-home message is that we ought to be preventing these hospitalizations from occurring in the first place. When acute hospitalization for heart failure is not like an acute coronary syndrome. There's not a thrombosis. This is a process that's been get gradually getting worse for days and weeks before the patient gets admitted to the hospital. If we're going to prevent the consequences of that hospitalization, we can't start even within six hours of initial presentation. The cat is already out of the bag by that time. What we need to do is focus on what chronic oral therapies patients are taking to prevent the hospitalizations to begin with. Okay, the message is keep your patient out of hospital. Exactly. Take better care of them as outpatients. <laughs> That's right. Thanks so much, Milt. Appreciate the Thank time. Thank you so much.